Okay, we are on two, three. We did two, two. I never, um, it was all about the table and stuff. That was all two, two. The table and the unit circle were all two, two. I didn't label it correctly. But two, three is all about finding trig values. I should say approximate trig values. Because what we just did was um, exact trig values. Your circle is all exact. So finding approximate trig values with a calculator. Oops. Calculator. Okay. Now it is very, very important that your calculator be in the right mode. So you want to check your mode. If you've got a different calculator at home that you're using, you're going to want to check it before you do your homework. All of the angles we've had so far, you only know one type of angle. What are the units on our angles? What have they been in? Degrees. We haven't gotten to radians yet. You don't know what radians are. So your calculator must be in degree mode. So if you press your mode key, mine is in degree mode. It's the third line down. You want that highlighted degree. Mode. Mode is right here. Degree needs to be highlighted. Okay, are we good? Okay, we're going to quit. So we're in degree mode. Oh. Between de uh, degrees and radians? You're going to find out in chapter 3 what a radian is. Third line. Okay, we're going to find trig values out four places. Back in the day before technology, all of these trig values were in a table that you would look up. But we don't have to do that anymore. So we'll start easy. If I want the sine ratio for a 53 degree, 18 minute angle, all I've got to do is ask the calculator nicely to give me that. And it will tell me what the opposite, divided by the hypotenuse, what that ratio is going to come out as a decimal. It won't be in a fraction, it'll be a decimal, that's why they're approximate. So, how do I get that? Type it in, sign, <laughs> got a sign button. 53 degrees. Oh, I can't read it with your calculator. Oh, well, you might want to keep up. Oh, <laughs> I was, but the calculator was up. Where's the degree button again? Under angle, minute. Oh, I hit degree again. I don't mean it. All of this stuff is on scientific calculators. It's on your phone calculator. If you don't have the graphing, it doesn't have to be a graphing calculator. They all have this capability. So the oh, sine ratio really is point eight zero one eight if I round off. Okay, very easy to do if I give you a sine, cosine, or tangent. You just type it in like you see it, hit enter. You can do those. So I'm going to move on to the challenging one. What happens if I give you something like um, the secant of a 101 degree angle, 15 minutes? Okay, we don't have secant, cosecant, or cotangent buttons. But we know there's a relationship to secant. What is the relationship that we know? Cosine. cosine. How does it relate to cosine? It's, just flipped it's flipped over. How do I flip cosine over? Two ways to do it. I can type cosine of 101.15 and then do 1 divided by that answer. Or I can just make the calculator flip it over right off the bat. 
Remember our identities? Ooh, ooh. 1 over cosine of 101 15. Anytime I see 1 over cosine, I know that that equals secant. So I can type this in. So now I just type in what I wrote down. 1 divided by the cosine of 101 degrees. Nope, it will automatically, because there's only one thing down here, just that cosine value. So I don't need parentheses. If you put them in, it's not wrong. Can, you, can anybody tell me why this is coming up negative? You didn't get that? What did you type in? Does anybody know why it's coming up negative? Why is the secant ratio coming up negative? I got you. Think about 101 degrees. What quadrant is that in? Quadrant 2, what is secant attached to? X. X is negative in quadrant 2. That's why it's coming up negative. All right. What if I gave you cotangent of negative 98 degrees. And we'll put the minutes on this one. Okay, I don't have a cotangent button, but what's equivalent to cotangent? Tan. I'm not quite tan. What do I have to do to tan? Flip it over. Flip it over. So how do I write that out? Um, one, over one over the tan of negative 98. Do I have to make this a positive angle for the calculator to figure it out? No. no. Did we have to make a positive to read our green sheet? Yeah, because I need to know where to look. Calculator doesn't care whether you put in a positive or a negative. It can find it and do the math. So it's 1 divided by the tan of negative 98. I don't need to put the degree symbol in if it's just a degree because I'm in degree mode. If I just hit enter right now, I'm good. Did anybody put the degree mark in? Yeah. It still gave you the same answer? Yeah. yeah. It's not necessary if I don't have any minutes with it. So it'll save you two buttons. So point one four zero five. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is, oh, given a ratio, find the angle. So, find the angle given the ratio. So we've got, let's say I give you the cosine of some angle is equal to 0.6352. So I'm going to know what angle has that cosine ratio. And this is just button pushing too. Do you remember from geometry it would have been, last time we did it. What helps us if we put in the ratio? What gives back an angle? You know, I'm gonna go for a cosine of negative one. Yeah, these are inverse functions. They undo. Wait, how did you? Wait, you already. I haven't done anything yet. Were we given that? Yeah. This is what you're starting. Your goal is to figure out the angle. So what you can do is the inverse cosine on both sides. That inverse is the negative one, and what happens is they undo each other. And leave theta. So now I've just got to type in the inverse cosine of 0.6352. So that's where, that's where it gives back an angle. Inverse cosine 0.6352. 0.6352.
There's the decimal. It's a little over 50 degrees, with 15 and a half, 50.56 degrees. I didn't say how far to carry the angle out. And then we can change it in 50.57. So 50.57 degrees. If it asks for degrees in minutes, 33. We can just go to that angle. Go to the DMS. 50 degrees, 33 minutes, 55 seconds it would round to. Which is 50 degrees, 33 minutes, 55 seconds. So whatever the directions say, decimals or degrees, minutes, seconds, you go with that. Okay, very easy to do when it's sine, cosine, and tangent. You just do the inverse. What if it's one of the other ones? Oh, looks very good. So let's go with um, cosecant is coming out equal to 2.4728. Well, I don't have an inverse cosecant to you. So I need this to be a ratio for a function that I know. So if cosecant is equaling this, what other ratio do I know? Sine. What will the sine of this same angle equal? It is one over that. I gotta flip this number over, this decimal. I don't care that it's gonna be ugly. I just remember, I know that I can put this over one. One over 2.4728. Now I can do the inverse sine on both sides of this equation. Inverse sine. Inverse sine. So these cancel each other out. Theta equals, now let's just type in the inverse sine of that fraction. Not one over the inverse, never ever do you one over the inverse. It's the inverse sine of the fraction one divided by 2.4728. 23.8535. Oh, I went too far. Degrees, doesn't matter. If I want DMS, I just convert to DMS. That would be 13 seconds. Any questions on what happened there? No. There's, um, there'll be some formulas. This one formula here that I'm going to do. A physics formula. Grade resistance. Grade resistance. Grade meaning the slope of a hill. So we've got some kind of a hill with an angle. We've got some kind of an object on the hill. And the grade resistance formula is equal to the weight of the object multiplied by the sine of the angle. So W is the weight of the object and the theta is the angle on the hill. Yeah. So our example here if I had a 2,300 pound car, can you find the resistance created? Yes. Very easy, plug and chug math. So you, they'll be giving you other formulas, but it's just, you know, plug the numbers in and let the calculator do the work. So the resistance. <laughs> 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 
Okay. So, how hard is this formula to work with? Not, Not at all. very. The weight of the object is 2300. Multiply that by these. Oh, I didn't give you the angle of the hill. The well, uphill. Let's see. If the hill is 2.7 degrees, so a fairly shallow hill. <coughs> so all I've got to do is take, multiply that weight times the sine of the 2.7 degree angle hill. Is it always, is it always what? Sine. Yes. I don't know. You have to ask the physician that one. A physicist that one, not a physician. A physicist. I have no idea. I can do their math, but I don't know why. That's why I hate math, because I need to know why. Oh. Then you need to be a scientist. Mathematicians do the math. Scientists scientists use the math. So be an actuary. Yeah, be an actuary. Yeah, freaking right. It's like the science behind math. Uh, that's a physics question that I can't answer. I think it's, yeah, how much is created on that angle. I, my guess. I don't know <laughs> physics. Wouldn't it be because it be It kind of seems like it would be. Yeah, I, I can't answer any of that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's 108, and I believe it's pounds of resistance. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, uh, one more example. Yep. And it's using your circle sheet from yesterday. So take out your circle sheet. Because I know I skipped this yesterday. Not much. I have like five lines. Plenty. I'm going to use like two of them. Okay, we found angles today with a calculator. Nice. <laughs> Missed. What a beauty. Okay, we could get one of these answers using the calculator. I could do inverse sine on both sides, and the calculator would give me one of the answers that I needed. But because we're using the entire circle, this is kind of an indication that you're supposed to be using your green sheet. So what you're doing circle sheets are out. I want all values where the sine is coming out equal to square root of 3 over 2. What are you looking for on your sheet to answer this question? The y. Look at the y. What are you looking for? 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is one of them. Are there any other angles that have a positive square root of 3 over 2 as the sine ratio? 30. 300. 120 degrees. Is she correct with 60 and 120? Yes. I want to say yes. 300. And That's negative. No, 240 is negative. Yeah. 300 is positive. 3 should be negative. Why? Because it's down. It that negative. y value was negative. It is negative. That's it. That's all. <coughs> that is it. 300. <laughs> so when you see the um, interval that's going beyond uh, the full circle, the answers are on your green sheet. Okay. What are you confused on? Why is it the y? Because signs attached to y. Remember the ordered pair, cosine and sine? Oh, yeah. Sine is equal to the y value on the unit circle. Any other questions, Justin? Do you know where it came from? No. Do you have your circle sheet out? No. Let's do one more. Let's go the... This is it. I want all angles of theta 
where the tangent ratio is coming out equal to negative 1. Let me do it. Let me do it. Okay. 135. Sure. 135. Okay. Good job, Lexi. Okay. If you did inverse tangent on your calculator, it will give you the 135. It will give you the smallest one that has that ratio. It won't come up with the other one. You want? I can show you. If I did inverse tan, you don't have to write this down, but if I did the inverse tan on both sides, inverse tan, inverse tan of negative 1, oh, it gives me negative 45. Where's negative 45 at? It's giving me the 315. I knew it would give me one of them. I thought it would give me the 135. Okay. Um, no, I'm done. Yay. Yay. It's all calculator work today. I'm pretty sure. The assignment's a little bit obnoxious. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, the cold cut on flatbread. A cold cut on flatbread. And it's actually really good. Wow. What's up? And he gets posted. If you want to know. And he, he has a comment subway on like two years. 28. There you go. Wow. Wait, did you just see his order? Yeah. I'm really freaked out right now. Like if his mom came in there and 